Hello and welcome back to Gapy's Garden. It's time for the July Pepper Update. Let's start here with the peppers in the greenhouse. The Chenance varieties here are on the left. And let's take a look at some of the ones that are starting to ripen up. So the Fatali here is our first one to start to ripen, but the peppers are really tiny. So we've got a tiny little pepper there and you can see another one back there. So I'm hoping they get a little bigger because they're not supposed to be that small. We do have one here that's still green that's a little bigger than those, so hopefully we'll get some good ones. We have one more that's starting to show a little bit of color. This here is the peachy, which is a cross by Tony Sherwood, and it's supposed to be turning peach, so we are seeing a little bit of peachy color coming through there. And then another one there in the back, and again, these guys are really tiny, so I don't think they're supposed to be that small. So hopefully they get a little bigger. The heat wave we had might have affected some of the pepper sizes. One of our biggest peppers here is the Cookie Monster Bubblegum, but it has not been setting all that many flowers and I've not seen any pod set. You can see a flower there, so hopefully that will set a pod. There's a few flowers in there, but not seeing any pods yet, so hopefully we'll get some because I was really looking forward to my first bubblegum pepper. Buried in the back here is the orange Thai pepper, and we do have quite a few pods set on there. They're very thin and kind of long, so we're just waiting for those to start turning some color. But it seems to be very productive, as most Thai peppers are. And then next to that, we've got the Pimenta Puma. So this is my only purple leafed pepper variety that I'm growing this year. And I'm pretty sure there were some pods way down in here somewhere. Okay, here we go. So I've got some kind of black. You can see these guys are pretty tiny too. Um, hopefully they'll get bigger as well. But I don't think, I think they're supposed to ripen to red maybe. And then this really nice looking plant is the Kangstar Texas Chocolate Bonnet. And I did see a few pods. It was a little bit late setting pods, but they don't look very bonnet shaped. You can see there is one pod there. It doesn't have too many pods set. It was one of the last ones to start setting pods. But oh, here's another one. Again, kind of small and not bonnet shaped. And here on the end of the Chenence variety row is the Chocolate Linzo, and that's another cross by Kangstar. So I've got two of those. This one in here in the front is one that I topped, and then the one in the back I didn't top. So you can see how much bigger the one I didn't top is. This one here that I did top seems to be more productive. It's got a lot more pods set on it, which is kind of surprising. The only one in the back here it's loaded with flowers but the only pot I think I see on there is way way down in the middle let's see if we can get to it right there I think that's the only pod set on there but yeah this one here that I topped is just completely loaded with pods so I'm not sure if that affected the the production here on the right side of the green aisles, I have mostly the annuum peppers I do have one bacatum and that is the piri piri so Piri Piri I've seen comes in Bacatum, Annuum, and I think there's a Chinense also maybe. Um, but this one is the Bacatum variety, which gets really tall, so I did put a cage around it. And we've got quite a few pods set on here, and they kind of look almost like a Thai pepper, but they're kind of long. The pods are really light colored, but they should be ripening to red, and we don't have any ripe ones or any that are starting to turn color just yet. And then my favorite sweet pepper is this violet sparkle here. So it has some really neat purple and yellow pods and those will be ripening to red. But since this is one of my favorites I'm trying to do a cross on it and I was debating what the cross should be. Oh, Looks like that one didn't take so that flower fell off. So we've still got one hanging on there so hopefully that one will take. 
So I crossed it with the Lemon Dream sweet pepper. So we'll see if that takes, but that's another sweet pepper I'll show you in a minute that I'm growing this year. And here we have the Tinker Bell. So this is kind of a mini bell pepper. It's supposed to be really productive and sweet. We've got lots of pods set on there and I don't think they get much bigger than that. So we should start seeing some pods starting to ripen here pretty soon. And then here is the Lemon Dream that I used to cross that other Violet Sparkle Pepper. And this thing is, I chose this one because it is totally loaded with pods. And it was also had some flowers that looked like they were full of pollen. So I was able to get some pollen off of this pepper and put it on the Violet Sparkle. But I'm really looking forward to getting some ripe peppers off of this one. And here we have Chloe's Sweet Tangerine. So this one is kind of similar to the Lemon Dream, except it's orange. And we've got some peppers in here, not quite as productive as the other one, but we've got a few. Actually, I'm only seeing that one there. There might be a couple more in there. Here's another one hiding right there. Definitely not ripening up yet, just yet. And then this tall guy is the Aconcagua. So this one was a little late to start setting pods, but we've got some nice, this is supposed to have some really big sweet peppers. So we've got quite a few pods set there and they are growing fast. And here is the Antep Acidolma. So this is kind of a, a short fat bell, bell kind of shaped sweet pepper. We've got a couple of pod set on there. Let me turn around here. So we've got a big guy right there. We should start seeing some ripening soon, hopefully. On this back row, we've got our Aleppo and we have quite a few pods set on here and nothing starting to ripen yet, but it's looking like it's going to be a pretty productive pepper. Look at all those back there. Nice. And then we have our Padrone pepper. So this one, most people harvest it while the peppers are still green. So I have actually harvested about eight pods off of this one already. Uh, it looks like there might be some more that are about ready to pick, but we've got a lot of these guys. We put these on some pizza. It was really tasty. They weren't as spicy as I thought they would be, but they're still pretty good. Now the last three are all different varieties of Korean gochu. This one here is the Lady Choi, and I haven't grown this one before, but all the ones I've grown are, have been pretty, pretty productive. I've tried several different varieties in the past, uh, but we've got this one here, no ripe pods yet. And then this little short guy is supposed to be the Korean dark green. So when this was a little tiny pepper, it was getting variegated leaves and it might still, it still has a little bit of those variegated leaves on the bottom, but it seemed to have stopped producing those variegated leaves after I brought it outside. So we've got quite a few pods set on there. So I'm not sure if this is the size it's supposed to be, um, but they're kind of smallish green little guys. And I have harvested a few of these green. Since it's called Korean dark green, I assume that you're supposed to harvest them when green. Um, so I don't know if they're going to get much bigger than that. But they are pretty spicy compared to some of the other gochu varieties I've tried. And then lastly is this Korean gochu. I originally got seeds from Kang Star, and this is my favorite by far gochu that I've ever grown. So it's get some really big, fat, thick walled peppers that are really tasty, great for drying, great fresh, um, great for just about everything. I've made hot sauces out of it too but this is one of my absolute favorite peppers. This is the only container pepper I'm growing aside from the pepper in a can peppers. This is a cross that I made a few years ago and it's a cross with the Korean gochu that I just showed you and the lemon drop pepper. So the, this is the, I think F2 generation. So we should be seeing the F1 produced yellow pods. So we'll see what these, they look pretty similar to what they were last year, but we were pretty loaded with pods. Um, they haven't started ripening yet, um, they, but they're looking like they're getting pretty close. Almost actually looks like they might be turning red. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with this one. But I had really bad germination on these seeds. So 
Um, this is the only one I was able to get to grow. I also planted these annuum peppers here in, actually there's some annuums and bacatums in here in a raised bed outside of the greenhouse. So this back three here are all bacatum varieties. This one here on the end is the ahi lolo and we are pretty loaded with pods on this guy. It was the first one of the bacatums to start setting pods but I'm not seeing any ripe yet, so it should be soon. And then the middle one here is the Sugar Rush Striped, and the pods are looking a little funky. So they're very light colored starting out, and these ones are kind of wrinkly on the bottom, which is kind of interesting. But we've got a lot more coming out here, and they look a little bit less wrinkly. But we've got a little ways to go before those start to ripen though. Here's another big one down here. And then a cousin to that is this tangerine splash. So this one is a cross of the Sugar Rush Striped and Susan Garza's Ahi Tangerine. So our biggest pods here are in the back. So they're kind of, and this is the F2, so there's gonna be pretty wide range of shapes on these guys but I'm hoping it retains the stripes that the F1 had. So this one here is the chocolate poblano and we've got two pods on this guy that are getting pretty big. We got one there and one here. This one is shaped a little bit weird. And then the guajillo here is just starting to set pods. So they're still pretty small. Nothing even close to being ripe yet. And this is the holy moly pepper. And we have quite a few pods set on there and they're getting pretty big. So I'm going to be probably using this for drying once it turns ripe. But it's going to be a productive pepper here. And then in this front row we've got the Tap de Corti. And actually I don't know, I don't think there's any pods set on this one yet. So this is one of the last peppers to set any pods. Yep, I don't see any. And this pepper here is the Sandia. And we've only got a few peppers set on here. There's a little one right there. And that might be it. Actually, there's one, there's a few here on the bottom. There's another guy there. Some more little ones. Then the last pepper in this bed is the lemon spice jalapeno. And we've got a couple of pods set, one right there. And this guy is actually a weird kind of round shape, which I don't think is supposed to be. And another couple pods. This one's getting a little bit of black on it. And this one is the biggest one. Let's have a look at our pepper in a can peppers. So here on the left, we've got our chocolate Linzo. These are the same ones that I've got in the ground. And this one started setting pods way earlier than the ones in the ground. I haven't seen any start to ripen up yet, but it should be only a matter of time. But we do have one here that is starting to ripen. This is the yellow Zamora, and it actually looks like these are turning more orange than yellow, but maybe they will end up yellow in the end. Um, so that one is doing really good. And then we've also got our calico pepper. So this is the variegated leafed variety and we've got lots of pods set here and they're all black so they should be ripening i think to red eventually so those are all the peppers we have growing this season thanks for watching and i'll do another update in august talk to you soon if you enjoyed this video please like and subscribe you can also find me on instagram twitter and facebook